Today, our goal is to ultimately get to the Grand Canyon, where we'll be staying on the rim of the canyon. Can you believe that? How awesome is that? But on the way, we're going to stop at some more Navajo Nation um, history places. We're going to also stop at Horseshoe Bend. We've got a few things on the itinerary today. It's going to be a great day. So let's get going. Last state, Arizona. <laughs> to start our journey through northern Arizona, we head to the Navajo National Monument, located about an hour's drive southwest of Monument Valley. The drive takes us deeper into America's desert landscape, where we are struck by colours reminiscent of the far outback of Australia. However, the American desert feels distinctly unfamiliar with a scale and a scarcity of flora unlike anything we've ever seen before, often replaced by vast desert sands. So we stopped in at the Navajo National Monument. We'll pop in here. They've got some old residences or shelters where people used to live. So we'll have a look in there and just see what they're like. So because water is scarce out in this area, one way of keeping clean is to go into a sweat house. So they would heat up stones, carry them in on like wooden forks, put them inside, you would disrobe outside, climb inside, and then a blanket was put over the front door and the sweat would somehow keep you clean. So after you've been in the sweat house for a while, they remove the blanket, you come out, and you either dry yourself with a, a soft cloth, yeah, soft, some sort of sort, and or wash yourself off with water. So I'm not sure. Anyway, that's what it says. <laughs> so I won't disrobe, but to crawl in there, it's it's pretty small. Um, you can sort of go in and lie down. So this other building here is a Hogan, and it, this one is made from the fork of trees. So three forks of trees that are all interlocked together. And then it's just covered in other sticks and mud. This is one type of dwelling and from what I can gather, traditional ceremonies must be held in a Hogan like this. That's my understanding. Because this is just one stop on our road trip, we opted for one of the smaller walks, the Sandals Trail. This trail takes us along the rim of the canyon. It was a good opportunity to slow down and admire the intricacies of the desert flowers that somehow thrive in this landscape. The trail ends at an overlook where we could look down into an enclave at the remnants of a cliff village. However, it is quite far away and without my long lens on the camera, it is hard to do justice to the details of this amazing spot. Heading back along the trail is mostly up a long, gentle incline. So it is advisable to bring water and a hat as the return journey can really sap your energy, especially in the summer sun. Once back at the visitor's center, you can view a scaled model of the cliff village to get more of an idea of what it looks like up close. So seeing those dwellings, cave dwellings, are just amazing. There's two sets of cave dwellings here. They're really, they're not preserved, they're not sort of fixed up or anything, it's just how they are. You can't get super close to them, but when you zoom in with your camera, 
Um, you can get a good look around. And it's a great little information centre too. Lots of information. So if you're heading from Monument Valley up to Grand Canyon like we are, pop into the Navajo National Monument. It's a, I don't know, it probably takes an hour all up, drive in, have a walk around, drive out. Fantastic use of time. We kept heading west towards Page and stopped for lunch before going to Horseshoe Bend. The drive took us through Arizona's dry northern landscape and we happened to be there during the first summer heat wave of the year with temperatures reaching up above 40 degrees Celsius. The scenery was beautiful in its own way, but we were amazed by the vastness of the desert in America. So we have arrived at Page in Arizona to have a look at Horseshoe Bend. We just grabbed some lunch, nothing special, just typical McDonald's. We haven't done that for a while. And it's been a nice drive. It's getting warm. It's drier as we get closer to the Grand Canyon. So this stop, Page, we've got a little 20-minute walk out and 20-minute walk back, so we're going to take some water. Let's go take a look at it. When we started our walk, it was a scorching 40 degrees Celsius. Yet, despite this, the trail was still packed with people keen to see Horseshoe Bend. Despite the heat, the walk was easy. The canyon is so deep that the boats on the Colorado River seem like little white dots. At the Overlook, those who are afraid of heights, like me, can stay within the fenced area, while the more adventurous can venture to the unfenced areas and look directly down into the canyon. That is definitely not for me. Okay, so we did the horseshoe bed. Man, that was packed. There were so many people, nationalities all over the world. And I, I made the comment to Scott that isn't it funny what we humans do? Like at Monument Valley, we go from across the world to see a big pile of sandstone. And here we've come from all over the world to see a bend in the river. But it is a magnificent bend. It was so deep. The boats at the bottom were just dots. And the if you ever do come here, be aware, it is hot. There is only two shade shelters, no trees, and there's a lot of people. So the people were just constantly streaming in and out the whole time we were there. It is 105 degrees out there Fahrenheit, which is about 40.5 degrees Celsius. It's the middle of the day. It's the worst time to do it, but we're on our trip to the Grand Canyon, so that's what we got. Being Aussies, you kind of go, yeah, that's what it is. But even in Australia, you probably wouldn't go and take a 40 minute walk either. So be aware that if you come here, cooler months are better, cooler times of day are better. It is crowded. It's a 20 minute walk each way. And then the time that you spend out there, plus it's $10 to park your car in that parking lot. But it is absolutely worth it. The view is amazing. Heading south from Horseshoe Bend, the desert landscape again seemed to go on forever, making us feel small in comparison. It was harsher and more desolate than the outback areas that we'd seen in Central Australia. The temperature kept rising, reaching mid 40s Celsius, which is around 114 Fahrenheit. Despite the relatively short two and a half hour journey, the heat, the glare in the landscape and the monotony made us feel like it would never end. Past the port, no, no return, baby, on the summer night. 
Just gone two o'clock as we cross the border into Arizona. The clock's changed, so you gain an hour, which is cool. So it's about two o'clock, but it feels like we've been driving for four hours or five hours through the same landscape. It's really, it's an unchanging landscape. And the last bit getting into Grand Canyon uh, has just been really repetitive, really open desert, finally. We reached the Grand Canyon National Park, but we still had another 60 k's to go before reaching our destination. And the heat was really intense. It is amazing how the heat affects your mental outlook. It was draining. popped out to one of the lookouts called the Terrace and um, it's just a massive, massive space. It's just, you can't do justice on it uh, with camera. The Grand Canyon Village is situated on the south rim of the Grand Canyon and provides fantastic views. However, to catch a glimpse of the Colorado River at the bottom of the canyon, you need to head west from the village. During the summer, you can only do this via shuttle bus. We spent the afternoon visiting different outlooks via the shuttle bus before heading back to our room for a much needed reset from the heat. In our next episode, we will continue our journey through the amazing landscape of Arizona. Until then, take care of your mates.